The following lesson is linked to learning outcome two, reading and viewing, and addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to explain development of plot, subplot, conflict, character, and role of narrator where relevant. Learners should be able to explain mood, timeline, ironic twists, and conclusions. A novel might be like a bus trip from Jersey to Durban. There's plenty of time for the action to happen, and the trip will include all sorts of events. But a short story is definitely like a roller coaster ride. The action happens quickly, but boy, is it exciting. The short story format is intense, action packed, and well, obviously short. Welcome back to our series of lessons on short stories. Today we are talking about the plot and timeline structure in short stories. In the last lesson, we looked at the historical background, the author and the story of the suit. We learned that knowing about these aspects of a short story help you to understand it better, as you will know something about the author's attitudes, events that were happening at the time the story was set, and something about the social situation. In these lessons, we are learning the skills for studying short stories in general. Remember that The Suit is just an example of one of the many short stories you may read. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to define the plot and timeline. Discuss how the plot and timeline contribute to the overall effect of a short story in general. Now, what do we mean by short story? This is what the learners had to say. A short story is a story which has happened in a short place of time and it has a limited number of characters and it doesn't require too many things you not know, to prepare a kind of story. As I said, it's a short story and then it consists of maybe three to four characters and then like it requires two little things. As I said, it's a short story. A short story is a piece of literature that happens in a small space of time. A short story is a piece of writing that has one or two characters. There isn't really a clear definition of what a short story is. So many different kinds of writing have been called short stories that no simple definition can cover them all. What we all do agree on is that there are certain features of a short story. Instead of trying to define what a short story is, we're going to have a look at the common features of the short story. The first feature that all short stories have is a plot. Do you remember what the term plot means? Plot refers to the events that occur in a story, or what happens in the story. Now, let's add something else to our mind map. Under plot, we would have to add in events in the story. A good writer of short stories will have a plot where the events are arranged for maximum drama. Because a short story is, well, short, the author must choose a limited number of actions or events that show us something about the main character. There is no space for the author to include unimportant actions. Because of this, everything else counts and we must pay attention to the kinds of actions included, what the actions tell us about what the author is trying to say. Another feature of the short stories is their timeline. Timelines are sequences of related events in chronological order. In other words, a timeline would list events in the order in which they occur. The events on this timeline may happen over many years, or they may be all crammed into a timeline of just a few hours. When thinking about the timeline of a short story, we need to ask ourselves about the time scale used by the author. Do the events of the story happen in a short time? Or do they stretch over a longer time? If the events happen in a short time, the story will be concentrated will be given more detail as only a few events will be covered. If they happen over a longer time, the narrative will be thinner. More events will be covered, so the writer will not go into quite so much detail about each individual event. We'll see an example of this a bit later. In real life, it is difficult to see a pattern in what happens to us. But in a story, the writer chooses the events that are important. These events are arranged in a pattern so that the lives of the characters take on a particular meaning. Normally, the short story has a recognizable shape. 
A successful short story goes from the introduction to the development to the climax and then to the denouement. The introduction gives us the opening situation in which the author provides a basis for the story as it's going to affect the main character. This initial situation is followed by the development. There will be complications. The author chooses events that make the life of the main character more difficult. These difficulties usually build up to a climax or a crisis, which means a very dramatic point. The drama of the climax depends on the story as a whole. At this point, the main character can no longer escape from the pressure of events and has to face up to the problem to come up with some kind of decision about his or her life. Finally, we have the denouement. This seemingly difficult French word means literally unknotting. Towards the end of a short story or novel, there are a lot of loose ends that the writer needs to tidy up or explain. We use this term denouement to refer to the explanation of the plot's complications at the end of a short story. So, the denouement is the rounding off explanatory events that follow a climax. Sometimes this denouement is a nice tidy ending, but sometimes as we see it within the suit, it can be quite dramatic. Now that we know what characteristics a short story has, let's apply these new terms and concepts to the story of the suit. First, let's look at the synopsis of the plot. A synopsis is a form of summary or outline in which only the main points of the story are detailed. Even though the synopsis will tell you the main events of the plot, it would be best if you are able to read the full text of the story. Philemon is a happily married man, but one morning he discovered that his wife is having an affair with another man. He races home to find them in bed together. He pretends he hasn't seen the man and the man jumps out of the window. He tells his wife that the suit that the men left behind is an important guest. He makes his wife serve the suit as if it is a guest and insists that they even take it for a walk around Sophia town. Matilda is unhappy and so she asks if she can join a cultural club for married women. Philemon agrees. Matilda feels much better and even invites guests over for a party. She works very hard to make the party special. The guests arrive and Philemon insists that Matilda bring out the guest of honor, the suit. Matilda is very embarrassed. Philemon goes out for a drink with one of the guests. Matilda commits suicide and Philemon comes home to find his wife lying dead, curled up as if she's asking for forgiveness. Philemon realizes what he has done and feels great anguish as he calls out her name. Now let's look at all the events to see how they fit into the development of the plot. The introduction gives us the basis of the situation. So the story starts with Philemon, who is happy in his life and in his marriage. The development in the plot is the complication that makes the characters' lives more and more difficult. Think of the development like the steps that lead up to the crisis. In our case study, this is where Philemon hears about his wife's unfaithfulness. He decides to punish and humiliate her by making her serve the suit like a guest. The tension builds and builds with each new embarrassment that he invents to punish his wife. The climax is the point at which the character breaks and things cannot stay the way they were. Although Matilda goes along with Philemon's idea of treating the suit as if it were a person in the beginning, she reaches a point where it becomes too much for her. Can you think of what the point of this climax occurs at? In the suit, the climax occurs at the moment when Matilda is humiliated in front of her friends and decides that the only way she can cope is to escape through death. The denouement ma generally is the part of the short story where the loose ends are tied up. In the suit, the loose ends are tied up where Philemon realizes too late how cruel his punishment was, how much Matilda was suffering and how much he still loved her. Quite often, the writer will put a shock, surprise or twist at the end. In this case, we the readers are just as shocked as Philemon at what Matilda has done. There are no warnings along the way to indicate how the story will end. So now that we have worked out how the events of the suit make up the plot, the next thing we need to do is put these events on the timeline. The first day of the story is described in a lot of detail. 
the right to describe the house, atmosphere, actions and feelings very carefully. The first day of the timeline takes up more than half of the total length of the story. Philemon gets up, gets dressed, takes his wife breakfast, he goes to work, he hears about the man who's sleeping with his wife. Philemon goes home and the other man runs away. Philemon makes the rules for looking after the visitor. Philemon goes out and Matilda tidies the house and prepares dinner. Discuss with the person sitting next to you why you think so much time is devoted to describing the first day of the story. I'm sure you will agree that all of the detail given at the start of the story helps to set the scene and also gives us a sense of who Philemon and Tilly are and what their relationship appears to be like. Then the story speeds up. We don't know how many days it is between the first day and the evening of Matilda's party, but we can guess that it is a few weeks, maybe even three or four months. There is enough time for her to get used to the suit being part of their daily life. There is also enough time for her to join the club for married women and get involved with all the different activities and make friends. In comparison to the first day of this part of the timeline is quite generalized and the writer doesn't give us nearly the same amount of detail. Why do you think less detail is given at this point of the story? The narrative for the middle part of the story is not as concentrated as it was at the beginning. Kantemba rather wanted to give the idea that the time had passed and Tilly almost thought she had been let off quite lightly for having an affair. The exact detail of these events was not as important as the detail in the beginning of the story that sets the scene or the detail that comes at the end. As the plot reaches the climax, time seems to slow down again and the story is told in much more detail. On the night of the crisis, the guests arrive. Philemon tells Matilda to get the suit. Matilda begs Philemon to leave the punishment for one night. Philemon insists and Matilda is humiliated. Philemon goes out drinking. Matilda kills herself. Philemon finds her body. The writer uses the same amount of words to describe the events of a few hours as he did to describe the weeks or months of the development. Why does he describe this one event in so much detail? Well, this is the crucial event that sends Tilly off the edge. Up until now, she has put up with Philemon's idea of treating the suit as a guest. But at the party, it becomes too much for her and leads to her suicide. By paying so much attention to this event, we as the readers are able to sense Tilly's discomfort and see how this could eventually lead to her suicide. Although we have been looking at the suit, plot and timeline are devices that are used in all short stories. When you are reading a short story, pay attention to the way that the writer organizes the events of the plot along the timeline. You will find that by describing key events in lots of detail, and then skimming quite briefly over periods of time that aren't as important helps to give its story a pace and tension. If you're trying to work out which events are most important, see what has been covered in the most detail. You will also notice that quite a lot of time is usually spent describing the opening events of a story as these help to set the scene. We've also learned that most short stories follow quite a predictable pattern in which the background information is given in the introduction. Events build to a climax, and then there is a denouement in which things are wrapped up at the end. Look out for the structure when you're reading a short story, as it will help you to follow the action and work out the meaning of the story. A story with a well-written plot will help to create excitement, suspense, curiosity or romance in the reader's mind. If the plot is not well constructed, you may be confused or bored. Here's your task for today. Copy down the following headings, introduction, development, climax, denouement. Under each of these headings, list in point form the key events that take place at each point of the plot in the short story, the suit. This will also provide you with a useful summary of the plot of this short story. All short stories will have different events that make up the plot. In the same way, every short story will have a different timeline. Once you can analyze the plot and understand the timeline, you will have the first two very useful skills for studying any short story. That's it for today's lesson. In the next lessons, we will uncover more common features of the short story. Goodbye.